Hello, everyone, and welcome to Operation Vigilant Guard. I'm Rob Dew. Jason Douglas. And uh, we were in Chicago from June 12th to the 17th covering um, this Operation Vigilant Guard terror exercise. And Military exercise, international policing apparatus. Yeah, it pretty much uh, went the gamut from, you know, local agencies all the way up to national uh, agencies working together to save us from the terrorists. And uh, so we're gonna start off with uh, June 13th. Um, it was a terror drill in Oak Lawn, a uh, simulated plane crash. And we're just gonna let these guys talk because they, uh, they pretty much tell the story. And it's, this is about 30 minutes long, so sit back and uh, hope you learn something. My name is Dr. Sanford Block, and I'm the director of the Cook County Medical Examiner's Disaster Response Team. And we are here to participate in a statewide drill uh, with the National Guard. We are starting off this exercise. The initial event today would be a plane crash. Uh, the plane is coming into Midway Airport and explodes over uh, the municipality of Oak Lawn. There are 350 fatalities. We've been requested to come out here and uh, assist them in the recovery and the identification of the victims. Walking wounded, come this way. We start off this initial Vigilant Guard event, the National Guard event, and we will demobilize today. There will be other events occurring during the, the next three days. Uh, in different areas of Chicago and Cook County. Okay. It's approximately two to three hours it takes us to set up an off-site morgue. It's called the MEDU, the Mobile Emergency Disaster Unit. It's stationed out at O'Hare International Airport. It is available to not only the county but also coroners in the state should they need it for a catastrophic event. Obviously there would be some challenges if we were to have an incident, but this exercise will help us work through those challenges, work better as a team. Okay, perfect. And so far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. It has the 56-member disaster response team that also helps to assemble the unit before we go out in the field for recovery. So there we go. Yeah. So, uh, so Jason, what were your thoughts while, while shooting this footage what were you thinking well we weren't really supposed to be there um, most media checked in and uh, we were kind of just uh, gonzo journalisting uh, there was lots of military walking around and being official it was their first day so I think they were you know kind of not knowing what was going on and right. putting it together as we saw later on they were there was a little bit of disorganization going on we finished with that, we went into Chicago, shot some stuff. Jason spotted uh, this great seal in a federal building. And, I almost wrecked uh, the car. <laughs> so I jumped out and went and shot it. And I paused it here at the bottom, you can actually see it says uh, Novus Ordo Seclorum. Mm. So. Here, here comes the next, uh, the next day we went to Toyota Park, which is a stadium, big soccer stadium, and that's where the National Guard were, uh, had set up a staging ground. We interviewed a colonel there, and uh, you know this is what he had to say. Johnny Miller, I'm a colonel at Illinois National Guard. Uh, Toyota Park is mainly the location where we receive all of our logistics support for this operation. All the National Guards will come here, and, uh, and so we know all the players that we have involved in the operation, and then we'll move out to subsequent locations from here. Having places like this available um, in any of the areas, any part of the state we're at, is critical for us to be successful. It's a good venue for parking. We have plenty of places to stage logistics, stage personnel, stage equipment. We can bring soldiers here to sleep. Uh, they can be fed here, showered. 
and then move on out to conduct operations. Uh, our partner country, uh, country with the Illinois is Poland, so we'll have uh, Polish military folks here as you're getting ready for the World Cup in 2012 there. And we'll also have people from their uh, agencies uh, that are similar to our civilian agencies where they're learning police activities uh, for some of the operations we're doing are more law enforcement than military in nature. Okay. And uh, whenever an opportunity comes up like that, we let, let that be known uh, to the Polish military and they share it with their other Polish government partners. And uh, we heard, of course, from law enforcement and uh, like we have Illinois uh, Counterterrorism Task Force and Poland has a version of that and so they're interested in these type of exercises to better train their personnel. So we just use it as an opportunity to share uh, the shared experiences and make all of our agencies better. There'll be some in uniform and some will be civilians. You know, we have some that are, th that for example, I think it's listed in here. For the international agency, we've got folks from the Polish consulate here in Chicago. Uh, Land Forces, which is the Polish Army. Uh, they'll be here. Polish National Fire Service, they're getting some experience here. Uh, Ministry of the Interior Administration and then Bureau of Counterterrorism Operations. So they're sort of like the FBI. Okay. Um, and then Republic of Latvia is also here, so they have, I think they also have a role in that World Cup that's coming up yeah. in Poland. So, and they do a lot of partnerships with that as well. And this seems like the biggest bone of contention for the entire project, you know. Is it okay for us to be working with foreign military and foreign powers in order to police our own citizens and territory? Also foreign police. You know? Foreign police, foreign military, foreign you know, secret governments. Okay, I'm Sergeant First Class Mark Ballard with the Illinois National Guard. I am uh, one of the exercise controllers who is running the simulation cell for this exercise. Here out of the sim cell, we will just be providing guidance directions, requests for information from the responding forces to keep the information flowing between the response agencies in Bensonville up through the area command and whatnot. This is uh, IEMA's uh, Unified Area Command trailer. Uh, it's a new piece of equipment that the state's acquired in the last uh, year and uh, it's been brought in to just test out, make sure its capabilities are working. Uh, it's able to communicate with all the other elements that are out there. The, the, the forces from Poland that are joining will be integrating into some of the, the civil military units that are participating in this exercise. The state of Illinois has an alliance, a, start, a state partnership program with the Republic of Poland. And across the last several years, we have been doing integrative training and coordination with them, uh, sharing information and learning from one another as part of the State uh, Partnership for Peace program. Bringing them over and incorporating them into the civil, military, domestic response role is just increasing that awareness and uh, visibility of what the role of the National Guard is and is helping them to understand how their military forces can integrate with their civilian forces in the event of a civil uh, situation that takes place. The Illinois National Guard has a no-fail contract with the state of Illinois to provide services protection to the citizens of the state. And in working with our partner agencies to respond to these types of situations, we have to train and exercise with them as much as possible. Training and exercising is the cornerstone of successful response in an emergency situation. So increasing the visibility or making us think that this is what the responsibility of our right. National Guard is. The National Guard is supposed to work with foreign governments to promote peace throughout the world. I, I didn't know that was their job. Here's some more fabulous Douglas B-roll right here. The troops getting ready and setting up their decom tents for the uh, various exercises on the 14th. It's the 14th of June. So then we go on to uh, the meth lab takedown. Day three. I'm Captain Joe Bright. I'm the program manager for the Surf P program for the Illinois National Guard. I'm here with Major Lee Jack from the Polish Epidemiological Response Center of the Polish Armed Forces. Uh, we're here participating in a Homeland Security exercise. We'll be working on military support to civil authorities as part of a terrorist scenario where they have a biological weapon. Uh, Major Lejak and the Polish Armed Forces uh, have a partnership program with the Illinois National Guard. Uh, we do cooperative training and exercises, and it's been very beneficial to both of our services in helping us develop our capabilities. The exercise today and what you'd expect to see will be some terrorist scenarios in which there are multiple casualties. We'll have search and extraction team that will be extracting casualties from different facilities. Uh, those personnel that are extracted would be contaminated potentially with a biohazard. So we'll have a mass casualty decontamination team that will decontaminate them. And then we have a medical 
triage and treatment team that will provide medical care to them for their move by ambulance if necessary to a long-term, to a hospital or other type of long-term care facility. Uh, you'll see National Guard cooperating with civilian authorities. Uh, typically when we respond, we only fall under a civilian incident commander uh, because we're in the states. Uh, we respond to their needs, their requests. Uh, we're basically a force provider and bring specific skills uh, to the table to assist local law enforcement and civil authorities in providing the services and protection to the people in their areas. My name is Major Emi Lishak. I'm from the Medical Response Center of Polish Armed Forces. And uh, we are here with my uh, soldiers uh, to uh, make a, no, a next step uh, <clears throat> in our cooperation with uh, soldiers from uh, Illinois National Guard. Uh, this cooperation started uh, five years ago. Last year we had a um, uh, big uh, exercise in uh, Poland, near Warsaw, and this year uh, we have a great opportunity to participate in exercise in Chicago. That's a partnership uh, uh, between uh, Illinois National Guard and the Polish. The state of Illinois is a partnership <coughs> for uh, for uh, Poland. So okay. we have we have um, good connections, and uh, this is the reason why why we train together from five years. Uh, so here it's uh, 12, and uh, the second group is uh, 10, uh, and they are designated to a civil support team in another place. So we are divided to to do groups to learn as much as possible. Okay, and is it is it just Polish Army or are there other... Yeah, there, we have also uh, participants from uh, our uh, Ministry of Inferior, from uh, Fire uh, State of uh, Poland and uh, from uh, Polish FBI and there are never, also another group from police. Do you have American forces in Poland? Do you do exercises with them there? Uh, actually, uh, uh, we, uh, we uh, now we have uh, American soldiers, but uh, that they uh, have no um, connections with us because there is um, uh, anti uh, uh, some some um, uh, special sp special forces, uh, another kind of forces. But we had uh, at least three exercises together with uh, our colleagues from Illinois National Guard uh, during last four years. Okay. But that was very telling, you know, so we have special forces in Poland training with their troops. And day four, Bensonville terror drill involving the Boy Scouts. Today's activities are starting with a notional event that occurred this morning with the Bensonville Police Department and other local law enforcement agencies. Uh, National Guard assets are being brought in to provide level A hazmat teams, decontamination, uh, surveillance, presumptuous identification of uh, suspicious material to determine if this is part of the overall anthrax scare that is taking place or not. Intelligence that was gathered uh, from the plane crash that took place on Sunday is leading to this area, which will also be in the Bensonville area. They will come to a distribution facility. There will be a hostage situation. They will determine that this was a staging area for distribution of an anthrax product. Uh, Boy Scouts of America are providing some volunteers that will be serving as uh, victims and of, of the chemical events and the contamination to provide people that can actually go through the medical triage, the decontamination apparatus, um, and those types of events. So they're basically the role players for the exercise.
pretty big exercise, probably, you know, 60 Boy Scouts down there with their Scout Masters and whoever else wanted to come along. Notice they have them lying face down in the anthrax powder. It's a very real life situation. <laughs> Everyone lie down in the anthrax powder. And then we're gonna move Hostages, you. you are expendable. Please put your face directly in the powder. All right. Yeah, all of a sudden the, the uh, Polish BOA is participating in this exercise, which they didn't mention at all before that. It was just they're here to observe, they're here to observe. Hey, it's BOA. Bureau of uh, Operational Anti-Terrorism is what I think it stands for. So I don't know, this was a hard one to swallow, watching watching these guys training with the Boy Scouts. It, it definitely looks like acclimation. Then you've got you know, Boy Scouts, which are kind of your perceived civil leaders in the community, being trained, you know, this is what it's like to be a hostage, this is what it's like to be a prisoner. Well, and really, if you think about it, the Eastern Bloc countries are probably used to situations that are somewhat like this. But who is this acclamation for? Is it for the Polish? Is it for Americans to get used to foreign voices telling them what to do? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a complex issue. And they're definitely working together, and they're working more together than they used to. The exercises are getting bigger. You know, all the states have... They have a partner in either Eastern Europe, Africa, or uh, Central and South America. And pretty soon there's a movement towards having one of each. Yeah. So right now some may have two, some may have one. Uh, there's a map we showed you earlier that, that listed all the countries. And, um, you know, you can search that online and, uh, you know, read up on it. Uh, do you think this is a good thing, that our National Guard is training with foreign governments? Why would they need to train with foreign governments? For one, the president's using them in combat situations, which I don't know if that's good, because then you're bringing guys back who are supposed to be guardians of your borders, and they're, you know, hardened Iraqi veterans now, and they've been on several tours in dangerous situations. And they're used situations. to people saying, you know, get out of my country, I'm a citizen. Right, right. So and that now they're going to be immune well. to that. Or you, you know, bring in guys from other countries to do the dirty work, and and then your National Guard just kind of does infrastructure and, right. and transports them, and the real dirty work's done by the other soldiers who, you know, they're not, they don't have a vested interest yep. in in the well-being of the United States. Well, the only thing we have at this point is the idea that our National Guard, who, you know, is just filled with great people, mm -hmm. it was like my brother or sister was was there with them no they were all very nice but you know you're getting to this point where we have to believe that if given contradictory orders to you know incarcerate u.s citizens to take away their guns to imprison and kill them that at some point they will stand up and say no that you know that goes beyond what i signed up to do you would hope that that when it comes to that point that they'll actually you know be oath keepers and, and and say, no, you know, that's not part of the oath is to take Americans' guns and put them into, into concentration camps. And I think they're going to have, there's going to be a big test coming up in the Gulf um, with what happens. We got some intel in that uh, they're going to be shipping soldiers there soon. Uh, but it hasn't been confirmed. That was just an, uh, a soldier in Iraq telling someone here stateside that they got orders to deploy into Louisiana. So we'll see what happens. Uh, so here they are lining up, getting ready to go through uh, the decontamination process, which that's what 95% of the National Guard was there to set up decom units and to you know, wash people down and provide that infrastructure, uh, search and rescue. And then there were some military police that were there uh, guarding uh, Toyota Park. They were guarding the stations where they were doing this exercise. And uh, so there's you know, some more shots of beautiful Chicago. It is a lovely city. And this was the one moment where, you know, up until now we had been given the red carpet to pretty much go anywhere and film anything that we wanted to. Uh, this one was like your normal, you know, media controlled situation. My name's Jose Santiago, Executive Director of the Office of Emergency Management and Communication Chicago. Uh, today we're having a uh, disaster drill taking place here. What we have actually happening is that we have a uh, subway train that has derailed. 
and we've had people injured inside the train. So we have a response of police and fire due to the fact that certain things that are going on in the, in, in, in the world right now, we're going to make sure that that was a natural accident. We'll have the police teams go in there, sweep the area, but we do have simulated injuries and contaminants taking place on some of the individuals. But this is a full-blown um, DHS drill that uh, Chicago is uh, working out with the National Guard, police, fire, and other agencies. Okay. How many government agencies are taking place? So on this total exercise, which has been going on for about a year, so we're, we're looking at about 50 agencies. Okay. Earlier uh, today, we were at an exercise, uh, some Polish military were taking were involved in the exercise. Is that going to be the same with this exercise? Right now, with the, the uh, Polish uh, folks that were involved in this particular exercise, they were there as observers. They were visiting the country, uh, and uh, they are one of our sister uh, cities that we, right. we, we go ahead and we train with all the time. So they came in and they were observing and watching how we handle our stuff and then, you know, sharing information back and forth of what happens in, in Europe as opposed to what happens in America. Okay. But are they going to be involved in this particular exercise today or no. observing? No. No, no, just observing. And right, it seems very it. adamant about it. I mean, you asked the question twice just yeah. to clarify there would be, you know, no participation. So obviously, you know, this is one of those things where you think about this large organization like FEMA or these even larger organizations working together. And there's so much misinformation. There's so many things that aren't being relayed to each, you know, side of the, uh, of the organization that's going on. Right. You know, how are they going to have your best interests in mind? Um, so while we were in Chicago, I was shooting uh, the Willis Tower, which used to be called the Sears Tower. And... Um, and I, I look down, and, and Chicago has these roads that go underneath the, the main street level. And I noticed they were closed off right underneath the Sears Tower. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's odd or not, but I went down to shoot some video just so uh, to prove that, you know, they have blocked off the streets under there. Looks like they're doing some work, but there was nothing going on that day. And, um, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a um, security guard appears in a suit. A well-dressed security guard. Yes. Can I help you? I'm just walking around shooting stuff in the city. What's going on? I can't allow you to film our entrance right here. Oh, okay. Are you with somebody? No, no, no. I'm just walking around shooting video footage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is it for? I put videos on YouTube, stuff like that. Okay. I was just, or I'm visiting Chicago. Okay. Right now, so I'm just shooting the Sears Tower, and I was just shooting, you know, stuff. On yeah. The I, you know, you can take as many shots as you like of the building, but I can't allow you to pan with that camera. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that's okay. fine. What are y'all doing down here? Just construction or? Yeah, this is just construction. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, so now we're going to show you a few shots from Nalco. Um, this is uh, at the end. We caught a plane that uh, the morning of this drill. So we went there at about 3 in the morning and hung out and waited. And uh, they seem to be behind schedule most of the weekend. They were way behind schedule. Or most of the week, I guess I should say. So they were supposed to be set up by four. Here's the sun coming up, and they weren't set up yet. Nalco uh, is the company that supplies uh, BP with Corexant, the uh, dispersant that they're using. So all the government agencies are working together. In Everyone's harmony. in bed together. That's, that's <laughs> what you realize when you start really researching this stuff. It's yeah. either somebody owns the company or they're best friends with the owner of the company. Yeah. Or they're on a board with another guy in the company. Or this is all you'll need to do in order to get into the company. So here they're applying, uh, you know, fake blood. And they really ran them through the ringer on this exercise. Um, here they are actually explaining what their symptoms are, what they should be acting like, um, if there's anything that they're trying to, you know, hide from the people that are trying to help them. These guys were fast. They were pretty good. Just throwing, uh, they are doing person after person in there. It reminded me of uh, doing haunted houses. Yeah. It's not so much quality, it's quantity. That's right. And lots of fake blood. And uh, in addition to the people, they also had a multitude of, uh, of 150 pound dummies scattered around with various symptoms. So they were pulling out a lot of people, but unfortunately we weren't able to stay uh, for that. We had to go back and catch a plane. And uh, the time we left, it was about five hours overdue. Yeah. As I mentioned, you're unable to get up there.
can try to put it back on, but either way, you still got to hold in the chest. I'm going to see that, okay? I need some lotion. Keep it wet looking. Uh, I, I saw some dates on, you know, the paperwork that was strewn about it. That place was vacated in 1994. Right. So you have this building. It's now 2010. You're, lo- you're walking around this building. It's as if, it, you know, the world ended in 1994. It was just creepy. And this is, uh, I guess, an abandoned building in the middle of this huge plant in uh, suburb of Chicago. Which was operating. We drove around it. And yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of other stuff going <coughs> on there. Um, and this is about it. Um, we got the uh, Polish troops were on hand, of course, observing. Um, I'm going to put that in quotes. Um, Lightly participating. Yeah. <laughs> Should this be a mission of our National Guard? Should they be working with foreign governments, foreign police agencies um, on these exercises? And they obviously think so. That's a culture that they need to drill, drill with as many people possible. Each exercise had a designation that basically made you think, yes, this is what the National Guard should be doing. Oh, a plane crash. Yes, that's what they should be doing. But in addition to the plane crash, there's also a terrorist link in there, and they're getting terrorist information. Every exercise had some sort of you know, alternate plot line that included terrorist plot, homeland terrorist plot, civil insurrection. Yeah, it was homegrown. They did one exercise that was not anywhere in their literature, and at Toyota Park they were going to have a civil disturbance uh, that night, uh, the night we were at uh, 15th and Clark. And that was pretty interesting because they didn't list that anywhere. Right. It was it was at the last moment, and it, things had been very transparent for us with the National Guard. Um, they they filled in a lot of the blanks, but every step along the way, you know, there was always that one that one missing part, or you would find out just moments before it, it happened, and that's completely understandable. But to have all of this literature that's printed out, but not include the fact that you're doing this civil insurrection and civil containment right at the place where you're setting up your your staging area that's your your command center and uh, and we did specifically ask was anything going to be happening around here right and they basically said no this is this is where we this is where we eat 